Holy Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Son, the three in one, Holy Trinity, be in our living, be in our worship, be in the light of Christ, and for us into the places of sanctuary in our homes. Amen. We are called into worship this day with these words. In the sacred name of God, creator, giver of all life, we gather online to worship. In the sacred name of Jesus, the Christ, Son, Savior, Sage, we gather online to try to connect as his community with the sacred power of the Holy Spirit, wind, energy, force. We gather online to be moved forward. The one who is three, the three who are one. Oh, friend. 
prayer of approach for us to embrace this Trinity Sunday. And I offer you these words. Holy, holy, holy is God, our sovereign God, who was and is and is to come. Before your unfathomable mystery, O God, all eloquence of form and language is facile. We cannot encompass you, for you encompass us. You encompass us with a spirit of love and a call to live life as moral people, people of character and conviction. Jesus set the bar high for us to aspire our lives in union with you. We all fall short of getting over that bar, but it is a worthy pursuit. Committing our lives to mortal, moral character, we can rest content in the knowledge that we are known, wanted, and loved by one infinitely greater than we shall ever be. Amen. through our service now to explore what God's Word might be saying to us on this Trinity Sunday. And I offer you these words to get us in that frame of mind. May the God who dwells beyond us and the God who dwells among us and the God who calls us to dwell together bless us now as we move into a time of reflection and wonder. Amen. So we've come to the end of May, and it is Trinity Sunday. And I want to also bring to an end today the preaching series on soul care. To begin, the more perceptive of you might have noticed something about this Sunday as compared to the preaching from last Sunday is I'm still wearing the same clothes. <laughs> 
Uh, I've added the stole for Trinity Sunday, but indeed we, we recorded our uh, sermons um, earlier before I, I, I went on, uh, on holidays for a couple of weeks. And so I figured, well, I can get away with one, one change, of, or not a change of clothes, but I think that's okay. As we come to the end of May, and I don't know about you, but I'm really quite eager to get into the summer <laughs> and, and to, uh, God, I hope we can all really enjoy this summer, unlike last summer, which was, uh, which was a challenge to say the least. When I come to the, the, the end of this preaching series on soul care, I, I'm sort of coming to the last element that I think is really important to a, a kind of holistic understanding. All the other elements of, of soul care thus far have, have em- emphasized you know, sort of personal well-being, uh, health and vitality. But there's another aspect that I think our scriptures are very clear about that would absolutely be considered formative when it comes to not only who we are, but our faith and how we live our lives. And then if we can live our lives in, in a way that befits that calling and that faith, then that is nurturing to our souls. The last element of the soul care model that I I want to talk to you about is this very complicated idea of morals and values. That Having a strong sense of morals and values is essential to soul care. And why I want to identify that as, as an important element is because It's so foundational to to who we are as Christians and our relationship with with God. And if we understand that soul is is that is our connection to God, it is through our soul, it's through that that divine essence, then how we express that into the world is essential to our souls and the health of our souls. Trinity Sunday is is a systematic idea, of course. Theologically speaking, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a a theological idea that has been hard for and remains hard for a lot of folks to kind of fully get their arms around. Three in one, one in three, and it's been centuries of debate. Well, there's another trinity I kind of want to bring your attention to this morning that relates to that trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that's the trinity of of justice, morality, and righteousness. The justice, morality, and righteousness come together in a systematic way. And why do I say that? Because that's how scriptures present those ideas in a very systematic way that in building a right relationship with God, if we understand that to be essential to soul care, then how we express that is a reflection of of that moral value, is 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 a reflection of how just our lives are in righteousness, in right relationship with God. I think that living a life with a, uh, without a, a, a well-established set of morals really does lead to personal destruction. I, I guess you could, you could say that the devil loves to play with people who lack an ethical framework. And that just leads to, as I say, to destruction and ruin. It is an emphasis that God establishes at the very earliest elements of our covenanted relationship. Even drawing from some of the the great texts of the Hebrew Bible, we have this foundational notion that justice, morality, and righteousness are integrally linked. In fact, from the biblical language point of view, both Hebrew and Greek, those words are often used interchangeably. And you, you have to pick up on the subtleties of the original language to know exactly 
how that meaning is construed and in translations that often gets lost. But justice, morality, and righteousness are truly integrally linked. Leviticus 19 stands out for us as such a powerful, and for uh, Judaism, this is a mantra in, in many Jewish worship. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice, you shall judge your neighbor. It's, it's that essential. It's that foundational an idea. And it's established for us in the Hebrew Bible. That is so powerfully presented in the prophets. And I, I could spend a long time with you citing many examples of justice, morality, and righteousness as reflected in the words of, of the prophets. I'll give you just two for today. From Isaiah 1, very beginning, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. That's God's call to Isaiah and then through Isaiah reflected to the Israelite people. Jeremiah, prophet Jeremiah in chapter 22, thus says the Lord, act with justice and righteousness and deliver from the hand of the oppressor anyone who has been robbed. And do no wrong or violence to the alien, the orphan, and the widow, and sh or shed innocent blood in this place. That exhortation weaves its way through the Hebrew Bible, and it is foundational to the Christian Bible, to our Gospels, to our epistles, to everything we know systematically about our faith. Justice and righteousness are integrally linked. It is always about God's justice, and that is the essential component, I think, of what Jesus is calling us back into, that right relationship, that righteousness, not self-righteousness that it's become over the centuries. People have abused that idea for their, for their own selfish purposes. No right relationship with God is a better translation of the word righteousness. And in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is... <laughs> is pretty direct and clear. Chapter 23, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, he says. These are, these are people who he believes have abandoned authentic Judaism. For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the wealthier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you clean the outside, clean the outside of the cup and of the plate, but inside you're full of greed and self-indulgence. It's a pretty powerful statement, and you can't just gloss over it. And it's not the only time Jesus calls out moral hypocrisy when he sees it. To not have that fortitude of your own moral convictions and a willingness to stand up and, and be counted for those, to me, diminishes the, that, that touch of divinity in your life. So for a healthy soul, I invite you to just take upon yourself not only all the things we've talked about the last number of weeks in terms of personal growth and development, but never, ever forget the particular call we all share to be evidence of God's justice in this world. Amen. Invite us now into a time of community and pastoral prayer taking these words drawn from the United Church of Canada to celebrate God's presence. Holy love, beginning and end, beyond all names, giver of food and drink, clothing and warmth, love and hope, life 
all its goodness. We praise and adore you. Jesus Christ, wisdom and word, lover of outcasts, friend of the poor, one of us, yet one with God, crucified and risen, life in the midst of death, we praise and adore you. Holy Spirit, storm and breath, building bridges, breaking chains, waking the oppressed, making us one, unseen and unexpected, untamably, untamable energy of life. Praise and adore you. Holy Trinity, forever one, whose nature is community, sun-bounded dance of love in whom we love and grow and know our neighbor, life in all its fullness, making all things new, we praise and adore you. Amen. Taught me 
is a well, it is a well with my soul. A prayer of dedication for May 30th for all who continue to support the life and ministry of Dominion Chalmers. Generous Creator, who created all things, we give thanks for your love poured out in Jesus, breathed into us to inspire, comfort, and sustain. Help us to multiply the gifts and offerings of our hearts to help in small ways to relieve some pain in our community. Amen. And as we come to the end of our worship this Sunday, May 30th, this Trinity Sunday, I offer you these words before we have a chance to see this incredible piece of music from Timothy Eaton Memorial Church Chamber Choir. As we all return to our daily temple, may God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Jesus come alongside you in your life moments. May the Holy Spirit fill you with conviction and purpose. Amen.